All right, where we left off, I was customizing this little motion cycle because I had motion in the storyboard, the, the rough storyboard, where the creature gets kind of dumped out. And I need to transition it from being behind the fern here to starting to be in front of the fern. And this is where kind of in-betweens come in. I have some complicated options here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate. I duplicated the creature twice. I'm going to duplicate the fern twice and then layer them up. So I might as well duplicate the background twice as well. So in-betweens are when you go between your keyframes and you make multiple frames. Then I need to duplicate the background fern twice and then move that up as well. So again, like flipbook pages, just trying to help it all make sense. So that one I think is good. So next, I go from there. Move these up, just understanding all your layer components. Okay, so this next frame, <clears throat> yeah, okay, this makes sense. I want to erase away from the fern in the front to reveal that the creature is now There we go, with the paw kind of breaking free of the fern. And the, the fern color on my creature is now going to break free of the background. So I might need to cut that out, not with a soft eraser, but with my lasso. Some of these kind of sharper edges. Okay, now that fern needs to keep moving. The fern on top of the creature. This one. So I'm going to puppet warp it. Lock that rock in place. Even on just this, this mask. Kind of push it out of the way. Just a little bit. And then this fern behind needs to move to match. Otherwise it will look like I have two ferns. Now in real animation, 24 frames per second, a lot of these frames, these in-betweens, would actually have a little bit of motion blur in them. Not every frame needs to look clean and sharp, just your keyframes. And I might even use my eraser at a lower opacity, because I don't like that this bit of fern looks like Booger is coming out of his mouth or his nose. And I can just deaden that a little bit on both layers. 
Okay. Now, am I happy with the creature there? I think so. Especially if I turn on the shadow effects. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So move to the next one. Hit Command S, save, and build up the next one where it's spit out. And I still need the back legs covered by the fern. So I'm going to cut the fern out. Hmm. Right here. But more and more of that body is breaking free. And this, you don't have to be perfect with your edges. We're not fully compositing a creature scape here. Especially because we're going to be viewing it as it's moving. And this paw needs to be completely free. Ooh, we can even introduce maybe the back paw. No, not yet. Let's see. There we go. And I'm, maybe I'll move that back paw with Puppet Warp. And once I'm done with this, once I get the creature out, whoops, got to lock it in more places, then I am able to run an animation test and see if that whole birthing of it works, which is the main part of my animation main part of my transformation. Okay. I don't need to move the fern that time because I basically have moved it once already. So it's just moving back to the place it was. Okay, my next frame is this, and the creature's all the way out. So I'm just gonna move the basic components, duplicate them. And it might be too big of a jump, but I'm gonna try it. Just put my creature up on top. All right, now I'm going to save. This is my assets. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. There's a bunch of ways you can do this. This is a new way I'm trying. I'm going to take my assets file. I saved it. My PSD, it's in assignment three. My PSD assets file, there it is. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say duplicate and it will make assignment three assets copy. I'm going to change that assets name in the file to stage. I'm going to mark that with blue. This is my stage. I'm going to open up the stage. So now notice that's the stage. It's the exact same file. Now, in order to animate, it needs to be a copy. You don't want to lose all your assets. What I'm going to do is merge. So, I'm going to turn on my, my first frame. There it is. Have the effects turned on. I'm going to select all of them up through the purple. Though the purple's turned off, I'm going to hit Command-E to merge them. That's one frame. 
And I'm going to turn that off. Turn on the next components, including the purple. Oh, I'm showing the fern moving a little bit. So I need to duplicate just the background behind each of these. All right. Because I'm doing a little bit more than just my keyframes. I'm just, I'm already knowing I need some in-betweens. Then I'm going to merge these. Command E. Turn that off. Merge these. Command E. Turn that off. Merge these. It doesn't look like much is happening, but in each of these, the fern is moving. Command E. And I can tell that just by turning on the eyeballs. Ah, you see the fern is moving, but I didn't turn on the effects. This is why it's so nice to have assets saved somewhere else. So I gotta go back. So I have the first one and I turn the effects on. So I need to make sure all the effects are turned on for these. Then I move my backgrounds behind them. And then I merge them together. And I don't actually even need to have them turned off. It just makes it a little bit clearer. As long as you know what you're doing, you hold down shift to select multiple layers in your stage, then you merge them together. And if you merge a layer that's turned off, then that layer just ceases to exist. Okay, so what do I have now? Goes from that to that to that to that. Up, oh, but my effects got turned off. I shouldn't have merged. So you can kind of test it as you go. So that's where I left off with the effects. Okay, now turn that off. Turn that on, turn the effects on and turn on the effect on my creature. Turn on the background. Okay, I can merge all those together. So that's where the head pops out. The rock moves a little bit, but that's okay. We're not trying to be perfections. Now, Turn on the next layer, make sure all the effects are turned on. I can also adjust these effects if I needed to, but they, they work just fine the way they are. Merge it, so then it goes from that to that, kind of shoots out. Ooh. And I turn on the ones behind it. If it helps make sense, I'll turn off these background ones that are getting in the way. All right, turn on the effects. The, the glow around the fern, the shadow around the creature helps separate them out, merge them all together. So as me, it goes from that to that. So it goes boom, 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 boom. Now I turn on these layers. Now I have the fern in front of the creature. I'll turn the effects on there. But the fern behind the creature, I don't know if I want the effects. I have to kind of decide. And I want the effect on the creature. So, yeah, I think that's too much. I'm not going to have the effect on the back fern. So I'm just collapsing them all together so that they're each finished frames. This is like taking the photo of the setup. Ah, but if I don't have the effect, then we're going to get some weird lighting. That's all right. I can live with it. Nope, you know what? I'm going to go back before I merged. I'm going to turn off the effect on the fern in front and just turn them on the ones in the back. Because then it won't affect the lighting on the rock. And merge those together. 